This robot starts when the light turns on and they drive over here and they can flip these switches either from the top platform or the bottom platform and they have a correct launch sequence code that they're given wirelessly that tells them what switches to flip. Uh, then they have a payload that they can drive up to the top platform and drop off by the launch pad. Robots can take the longer easier way up the acrylic ramp or they can try to get over the speed bump on the shorter ramp. In this top level, there's a light that either shines red or blue, and they have to hold down the correct colored button in order to fuel up the rocket. If they get the color wrong, they're out of luck. With the launch sequence, fueling, and payload drop-off done, they can drive back to the start platform and hit the rocket launch button. The competition obviously focuses on the robots, but this year I wanted to take the time to document the course that we did because every year there are a lot of cool ideas that go into building it and they get lost when TAs graduate. For example, these glowing orb weather towers are made from transparent filament and the bases are laser cut MDF that we've covered in foil tape. The switches are normal toggle switches that we've added 3D printed extensions to so they're easier for the robots to hit. This year we laser cut as many things as possible so it was simple to build and we made sure that the flooring was a solid color so we could paint over it when the robots damage it. So I designed most of the rocket centerpiece and despite being big and complex it was actually pretty easy on the aesthetics people because it didn't need painted, everything was colored acrylic. Also because this laser cut course was quicker to build it gave the electrical team lots of time to do awesome lighting effects like on these fuel lines. A big goal for this year's course was to have automatic scoring. So there are switches that know when the payload has been picked up and when the payload has been set back down. The robot positioning system or RPS has also been redone this year. So we have cameras that look down at the course and identify the position of QR codes on top of the robots and then provide them with their position. To avoid making it too easy, we cut off RPS when the robot is near the rockets. So under the course, this is how the rockets are actually lifted. There is a servo that swings an arm back and forth, and the rockets are just attached to a dowel rod. Uh, bike cabling is actually used to push the dowel rod up and launch the rocket. Someone totally lost a bet because this worked.